Hi guys, and welcome to the week six spiral corrections. Make sure you have your spiral in front of you and a pen to do corrections. Remember, corrections are not just writing the correct answer, it's also putting the work that goes along with it. Okay, for Monday's problem, uh, the first part says, the table shows the length of four hiking trails. Select the appropriate decimal equivalent of each trail length. So over on the right here, we have some possibilities for you, um, for your conversions. Um, so for Lake Lakeview, it's one and one-fourth, and one-fourth, um, we need to convert that to a decimal. So you should have the fourths memorized. Um, those are pretty easy to memorize. But in case you don't, to change one-fourth into a decimal, you divide the numerator by the denominator, add a decimal two zeros, bring the decimal up so you don't forget to later, and then you divide until it terminates or repeats. So four can't go into one, but it goes into ten twice, and that's eight. With two left over, bring down the zero, and then four can go into twenty five times, and that's twenty nothing left over. So Lakeview would be 1 and 25 hundredths. Um, number 2, Forest Lane, or Forest Lane, 1 and 1 third. Again, 1 third, um, to write as a decimal, you would divide the numerator by the denominator, add a decimal two zeros, bring the decimal up so you don't forget to later, and divide until it terminates or repeats. Um, this one, three can't go into zero, or I'm sorry, three can't go into one, but three goes into ten three times with one left over. Bring down the zero. Three goes into ten three times, one left over, and you're going to keep dividing, and you're going to get a repeating decimal. So this would be one and three tenths with a bar over the repeating bar. For Sparrow's Stroll, one and three tenths, if you just say that fraction out loud, you can easily write that as a decimal. One and three tenths. For Mountain Climb, we have two thirds, or I'm sorry, one and two thirds. So I'm going to go up here where I have room to change two thirds into a decimal if you don't have it memorized. Divide the numerator by the denominator add a decimal two zeros, and divide until it terminates or repeats. Three can't go into two, but it goes into 26 times, and that is 18, so we have two left over, bring down the zero. Three goes into 26 times, that's 18. Two left over, add a zero, bring it down, it's going to be repeating. So mountain climb would be one and six tenths with a bar over the six. Okay, for the second part, it says Zoe went to lunch with a friend. After tax, her bill was $12.05. Which of the following rational numbers is equivalent to this amount? You're going to select all that apply. Okay, I'm moving this up so I have room. I'll do it down on the bottom. Um, so $12.05 and five, $12 is 12 and 5 hundredths. So what I'm going to do is write that as a mixed number. We have 12 and 5 over 100. So once I do that, I see immediately that the last one can be selected. Now I see that 5 over 100 could be reduced by dividing by 5. And I'm going to get 12 and 1 20th. And I see that selection right here. And then I'm seeing two improper fractions right here. So I'm just going to turn 12 and 1 20th to an improper fraction and see if it comes up as one of those. So 12 times 20 is 240 plus 1 is 240 over, or I'm sorry, 241 over 20. So that means this one could be selected as well. And the only one not selected is 25 over 2. Tuesday. <clears throat> Use the table that shows the length of small mammals. A. Which animal is the smallest mammal? 
All right, so we have here um, three fractions and one decimal. So I think it would be best to convert them all to the same, um, either all fractions or all decimals. Um, I think it would be easier to write them as decimals. So um, for Eastern Chipmunk, we have one third. So if I was going to write one third as a decimal, I just did on the other problem, and it's point three repeating. So that is the Eastern Chipmunk. And then for European Mole is five twelfths. And if I was to divide the numerator by the denominator, add a decimal and two zeros, and divide until it's repeating, or um, terminates, I would actually get a repeating decimal. So 5 twelfths would be uh, 0 0.416 with a bar over the 6. And again, that is the European mole. Um, and then I have the masked shrew, which is 1 sixth. And again, if I'm uh, dividing the numerator by the denominator, adding a decimal two zeros, um, I'm going to get um, 0 0.16 repeating. And so MS for masked shrew. And then the spiny pocket mouse is already a decimal, which is 25 hundredths. And that's the SPM. All right, so going back to the question, which animal is the smallest? Looking at these decimals, looking at the tenths place on all of them, I have a three, a four, a one, and a two. The one is the smallest, so that means the masked shrew is the smallest. B. Which animal is smaller than the European mole, but larger than the spiny pocket mouse? Okay, so smaller than the European mole, so smaller than 5 twelfths, but larger than the spiny pocket mouse. So the European mole is 5 twelfths, which was um, 0 0.4 0.416 repeating, and then the spiny pocket mouse is 0 0.25. So we want to come whatever is in between that. So looking at the eastern chipmunk, um, it is one third, which is 0.3. And then looking at the masked shrew, it is one, uh, 0.16. Uh, at one six as a decimal. So that means the one that comes in the middle is the eastern chipmunk. I think I had some technical difficulty there, but we'll see how it works out. So I'm going to call it the eastern chip because I ran out of room. Okay, <clears throat> last one. Order the animals from greatest to least size. Okay, so looking greatest to least, um, let me use a different color pen. It's red. Okay, so the greatest looking at my decimals down at the bottom is with a four in the tenths place. And so that's five twelfths, which is the European mole. I'm going to call it the E mole. Next biggest would be the three, so the one third, and one third is the eastern chipmunk. Call it the E chip. Then we have 0 0.25, which is the spiny pocket mouse. So spiny PM, which leaves the smallest, which is one sixth which is the masked shrew.
Okay, moving on to Wednesday. A group of friends bought two large pizzas and ate only part of each pizza. The picture shows how much was left. How many pizzas did they eat? Okay, so important to figure out what they're asking. We're asking how much, how many pizzas they ate, but what is shown is how much is left. So when I'm counting, um, so I'm not going to count the two actual pizza, pizza, the pizza pieces that I see. I'm going to count the spots where there's nothing there because I want to count how many they ate. So they they each have eight pieces. So on the first pizza, there's one, two, three, four, five, six out of eight pieces. So we'll write six over eight. And on the second pizza, they ate one, two, three, four, five pieces. So that's five out of eight which gives you 11 out of 8. And we wouldn't say 11 eighths pizzas. We want to like make that into a mixed number that makes sense. So 8 can go into 11 once with 3 left over. So 1 and 3 eighths pizzas were eaten. Next part, it says the table shows the results of a survey on students favorite kind of movie. Select the appropriate values to complete the model to find the fraction of students that prefer, prefer comedy or action movies. Okay, let's move this over. So we have a little kind of a organizer for us. We know that we're going to take one fraction add it to another fraction and that will tell us the fraction of students that prefer comedy or action. So I'm going to look over at this table and we have four types of movies and there's a number of students. So to figure out my denominator for my fractions, um, first I'm going to have to add up all the students. So for action there's 29, for comedy there's 42, for drama there's 14, and for horror there's 15. So 29 and 42 will give me 71, and 14 and 15 will give me 29. You add them together, we have 100 total. So that's my denominator. So um, we want to know comedy or action, so it's just going to be these two here. So that means our first one is going to be 42 over 100, and then we're going to have plus comedy, uh, I mean action which is 29 over 100 and 40 plus 29 gives you 71 over 100 and that's in lowest terms. Thursday. <clears throat> Brett has five-sixths of his monthly income left to spend. He has budgeted one-eighth of his income for a new video game and one-third of his income for savings. Determine if each statement is true or false. A. Brett will have seven-eighths of his income left if he only buys the video game. Alright, so he will have seven-eighths left if he only buys the video game. So what he has now is he has five-sixths left, and it says that the video game is one-third. So if we subtract this, it will tell us true or false. If that comes out to 7 eighths, it's going to be true. If it doesn't, it's going to be false. So different denominators mean different problem. LCD of 6 and 3 is 6, so top fraction will remain the same. But I did multiply... Oh, wait. I'm totally seeing a mistake I just made. Erase... and go back. Um, I put the wrong number. So the video game is 1 8. So I'm sorry, I'm going to do 5 6. Oh, that's big. Minus 1 8 for video game. Okay. So LCD of 8 and 6 is 24. Um, both of my denominators changed, so I got to do my numerator as well. So 6 times 4 is 24, 
5 times 4 is 20. 8 times 3 is 24. 1 times 3 is 3. And 20 minus 3 is 17 24s. So the statement is Brett will have 7 eighths of his income left. 17 24s does not equal 7 eighths. So this one is going to be false. B. Brett will have half of his income left if he only puts money in savings. All right, again, take your five sixths that he has left, subtract now the savings is one third. Different denominators means different problem. LCD is going to be six. So top one stays the same. Three times two is six, one times two is two. 5 minus 2 is 3 sixths, which equals 1 half. And so, yes, Brett will have half of his income left. So that one is true. C, Brett will have 3 eighths of his income left after buying the video game and putting money in savings. Okay, for C, first we're going to, first I am going to... Well, I think I'll do 5, 6. I already did 5, 6 minus the 1 third for the savings, and I have half left. And so <clears throat> if I do 5, or I'm sorry, half minus the 1 eighth for the video game. So I'm getting this 1 half from right here and I'm subtracting the savings. So just saving myself some time there. Eight is gonna be my LCD. And so bottom one stays the same, but the one top one I multiply by four. So four eighths minus one eighth is three eighths. So if I took this and subtracted both, Brett will have three eighths of his income. That is true as well. Turn the page, make sure you have homework number 25, perimeter and area of polygon, review worksheet in front of you. Reminder, corrections aren't just writing the right answer, you have to put the work that goes with it. With this, be very careful when you're selecting your answers. A lot of the problems look the same. It's going to be the same shape, but in one you're going to find the perimeter, one you're going to find the area, and vice versa. So make sure you're being careful of what you're actually looking for, because in the multiple choice, I'm going to put answers for both to see if you're paying attention. Number one, find the area. All right, so finding the area of a rectangle. For area, there's a formula, and it's area equals length times width. So when I substitute my values, I'm going to be multiplying 10.5 times 4. And when I multiply 10.5 times 4, I am going to get 42. And since it's area and it's two-dimensional and it's measured in square feet, I'm going to put 42 feet squared. Number two, find the perimeter. This is the same rectangle for number one, but we're finding the perimeter now. Now we want to know the distance around the outside. So the formula for perimeter is we have two lengths that we're going to add to two widths. Because there's two 10.5s, there's two fours. So when I substitute, I'm going to have two times 10.5 plus two times four. So I'll simplify that first and 10 and a half times 2 is 21. And 2 plus 4, or I'm sorry, 2 times 4 is 8. And so 21 plus 8 gives me 29 feet. Number 3, find the perimeter. Okay, so this is a triangle and we want to know the perimeter, which is the distance around the outside. So we're going to add up all the sides. 
So on the picture, I see the 7.2, but then up top it says all sides are 7.2. So triangles have three sides, so I'm going to do side times three. Substitute my values. The side is 7 and 2 tenths, and I'm going to multiply that by 3. And 7 and 2 tenths times 3 gives me 21.6 centimeters. Number 4, find the area. All right, to find the area of a triangle, we have a formula either one half base times height, or I like this one, base times height divided by two. So when I substitute my values, the base is what it's sitting on, it's 7.2, and the height is five, and we're gonna divide that all by two. Um, so when I multiply 7.2 times five, um, I actually get 36 and then I want to divide that by 2 and that's going to give me 18 so it's 18 centimeters and since it's area it's centimeters squared number five a typical page of notebook paper is 11 inches long by eight and a half inches wide what is the area of a typical page of notebook paper All right, so we're trying to find the area, and a notebook paper is a rectangle. So area of a rectangle is length times width. And so when I substitute my values, I'm gonna have 11 times 8.5, eight and a half. And when I multiply 11 times eight and a half, I'm gonna get 93 and a half inches squared. So the area is 93. 0.5 inches square. Number six, a typical page of notebook paper is 11 inches long by eight and a half inches wide. What is the perimeter of a typical page of notebook paper? Okay, so this is the same shape from number five, and we want to know the perimeter, so the distance around the outside of a piece of paper now. So it's still a rectangle, but perimeter two times the length plus two times the width. When I substitute my values, it's gonna be two times 11, plus two times 8.5. And then two times 11 is 22. And two times eight is 16, plus one more is 17. And then when I add 22 plus 17, I am going to get 39 inches. Last row, number seven, find the area of the composite figure. So this is a composite figure because it's made up of two or more shapes. I have a parallelogram up here and a rectangle right there. So I need to use the formula for area of a parallelogram and area of a rectangle and then add them together to get the total. So I'll start with a rectangle. Rectangle, length times width, substitute my values, 14 times 5, and that's going to give me 70. So 70 for that guy right there. Um, for a parallelogram, the formula is base times height. So the base of the parallelogram is 14, and the height is this little dotted line right here, which is 7. And then 14 times 7 gives me 98. So I'm not done yet. Um, I have to add both of these together. So 70 plus 98 gives me 168 uh, centimeters squared, which is F. Number eight, find the perimeter. All right, it's a square. It's perimeter, the distance around the outside. So for a square, all sides are the same, so it's side times 4. And so I'm going to do 7.5 times 4. And 7.5 and times 4 gives me 30 centimeters. Number 9, find the area. All right, so area <clears throat> um, is how much space it takes up. So different formula. For a square, it's side times side. 
So now I'm going to multiply 7.5 times 7.5 and then that will give me 56.25 and then my units are going to be oh, that's hard to read centimeters. Oh yeah, from the second one. Squared. All right, congratulations. You have finished week 6 spiral. Make sure you watch the video until the end and turn in your corrections to your teacher. See you next week.